You manage, lads. Yeah. Look what I found. Family photos. We forgot to take them with us when we moved out. Can't leave Grandad behind, can we? He'd be in his element if he was here today. Really? Yeah, moaning was his main joy in life. He'd love every minute of all this. These are Annie's photos, aren't they? Yeah. She hasn't said anything about them. Probably forgotten, like we did. I doubt it. I think it's all connected with this break from the past. She's avoiding coming to terms with it. Why can't life be straightforward? I can't answer that one. Oh. Do you ever wish you were the last person left alive on this planet? Life would be so much easier without other people. We should give them an hour or so more, I think, before we go up there. What's that? Another hour before we go up to the farm. No. I don't think I'll be going there. Not today. I'd like to go, really. Feels like somebody just died, doesn't it? I didn't pack the photographs. I thought we'd give them to Ma. But... She's hell-bent on marrying Leonard. She's not. Well, Robert was born in this room. In the room underneath, I was born. Peggy, Joe. You never talk about your sister. We didn't know each other very well. We had so little in common. What happens to places like this, Sarah? I mean, do they just sit there with a the condemned notice on the old farm gate till they're swallowed up by the grass and thistles? I suppose they do. Kids will play here, in the haunted house. We'll be the ghosts, won't we? Me, Joe, Peggy, Dad. Ma, Grandad. I think I'd rather someone flatten the place. It'd be cleaner. It won't be here for much longer, Jack. I don't much feel like drinking champagne. Well, I do. Come on, Sultan. You're getting flat. Well, let's at least wait for Ma. She's already here. They were right behind me on the road. <sighs> Only a house. Yes. Where's Ma? Having one last look round? She's not coming, Joe. What? Annie's not coming. She's asked me to pass on a message to you. She says when you feel like including her in what's going on, she might then start joining in. Until that happens, she's going to stay away. Is it nine o'clock yet? No. It's ten to eleven. Coffee? Tea. Honestly, Derek, I wouldn't be ringing if I wasn't desperate. Well, well, can you recommend somebody else? Yeah, okay. Thanks. Hiya, Mum. Hello, love. <laughs> Problems? Uh, yeah. 
I've had to send one of the drivers home sick, so there's a unit full of videos out there which has to be delivered today, and I can't find a driver. Anyway, I'll sort it out somehow. So, you're staying with Alan Turner, eh? You didn't mention it to me last week. I didn't know I was coming last week. So you rang Alan, did you? You spoke on the phone, yeah. Bit forward of you, Mum. I thought you knew him better. All right, if you must know, he rang me. I thought I'd qualified for a bit of privacy from my children by now. But what did he say? Let me take you away from all this? No, he just sounded so unhappy that... Yeah, don't they always, when it suits them? I was worried about him. Still am, really. <sighs> You're a soft touch. I know. Listen, why don't you make this delivery? What? You can drive those things. Oh, Chris would go mad and I'm supposed to be meeting him for lunch. It is an emergency, isn't it? Yes. So, take the initiative. Yeah, all right, I will. Hey, listen, don't leave without me. I'll be five minutes. Mum, where are you going? to look the part. <laughs> I don't remember it being so filthy. Well, it probably looks worse than it actually is. Wrong. Then what are you doing out here? Get back to that scrubbing, lass. Right, I'm downing tools. Tea break. Good idea. I'll put the kettle on. We could catch a couple of Fanny at the mill. Take her those photos. I feel bad about her. I can't help it. How can you feel bad about something that's completely incomprehensible? Well, maybe one of us should go and see her. Try and sort it out. It's so... Childish. Hey, slow coach. Welcome to that cup of tea. And you've let me lie in. I wanted to get up. Go to town. Get a new pair of jeans. And a jacket. I'm skinned. Use your credit cards. That's what they're there for. Oh, so you want me to accumulate huge debts? Oh. I was looking for cups. They were sticking out of your folder. I haven't been through your things. I know, you're not the type. I'm sorry. I had no right to read it. They were just sitting there, I couldn't stop myself. I said it's all right. I'm not in the habit of reading other people's mail. I haven't ever done anything... You did this time, though, didn't you? I'm sorry. Forget it. What happened? I've been waiting ages. Um, we've been out driving. Well, you phoned, told me you're going to be late. It was an emergency. I had to send Harry Fenton home. He was sick and I couldn't find another driver to take his load. You'd have been proud of her, Christopher. She's good. You delivered the load. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you for a well done wouldn't go amiss. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for sending home one of my drivers. Thank you for taking a very expensive unit out on the road with no experience and no reference to me. Well done. Oh, no. I'm sorry, but have you got any idea how dangerous oh, it is Chris, to... Oh, Chris, you don't have to tell us. 
It was terrible, wasn't it, Mum? First we got a flat tyre and we just didn't know what to do. Then we ran out of diesel because I'd been so stupid I'd forgotten to check it before we set off. And then the tailgate came undone because we didn't check that. Oh, yes, all the videos fell out onto the road and I'm afraid they got crushed. And then I drove straight into a tree. I don't know why all I was doing was checking my makeup in the mirror. Must we'll never take a unit out again, love. Not without a man along to help you. Oh, I won't. I was so frightened. So all I can do, love, is throw myself at your feet and beg forgiveness. Oh, come on, Chris. Come like on. no. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a job in a bar or waitressing or something. Things really that bad? Yeah. I feel guilty for getting some new clothes, but I really needed them. Should I take this back? I'm not sure about it. What do you think? I don't really know about clothes. <laughs> well, nothing much to know. Why don't you consult Michael Feldman? Do you want to talk to me about Michael? No. Do you want to talk about him? What is it? What's the matter? What have I done to upset you so much? How can I help you if you won't talk to me about it? Did you go and visit him again? Why bother asking me that? You read the letter. I'm not going to stop seeing him, Jay. It's just because you don't like it. I feel sorry for him. He's doing his best to get over all this. And if I can help him, I will. You didn't want to come to Bristol with me, did you? Not when you found out it was on the 29th. Yes, I did. Because that's when he gets out and you've arranged to meet him. I haven't arranged anything. That's not what Michael Feldman thinks. I've told you it's not important and I meant it. What more do you want me to say? It's someone who I once knew who needs my help, for God's sake. Why does he need help from you? Because he hasn't got anybody else. But he's definitely got you. She should be here any minute. Oh, that's her now. Hiya, Beth. You all right? I'm fine. Good day at school. Do you want an honest answer? <laughs> Actually, that's one of the reasons I called in to see you. To ask you if I've been bunking off? No. It's about your art project for your exam. I was thinking, like, instead of me coming here to talk to you, why don't I pick you up in the car and take you out into the Dales? You could bring your sketchbook or your paints. Sounds like a good idea to me. Well, you'd be killing two birds with one stone, wouldn't you? What do you mean? You could get me and your homework out of the way at the same time. <laughs> You're on? Right. Well, when shall we start? Whenever you like. How about right now? Oh, I can't. Oh, come on, Lorraine. You can spare a couple of hours. I'm sorry, Beth. I've arranged something with Debbie. Well, don't worry about it. There'll be other times. I'm not trying to make excuses. It's just I've made other arrangements for today. Well, you've got my number. Just give me a ring when you know what you're up to. I will. Annie, you shouldn't be doing that. I've been staring at a book all day and haven't read a word. I feel useless if I'm not doing something. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, hi, Sarah. Hi. I'm not stopping. There's too much to do. Is she in? Yeah, she's in the kitchen. I'll leave you to it. The kettle's done. I just wanted to say you were missed at Emmerdale today. Oh, I was missed, was I? Well, of course. We just thought it would be nice. That doesn't sound too naff. Little farewell to a place that means so much. It may very well have been nice. I might have wanted to do things a bit differently. I have lived there longer than anyone else. It means more to me than... I wasn't even asked, was I, Sarah? It seems it's as hard to telephone London as it is Spain. I've um, brought you some photographs from the parlour. Jack thought, until you're settled. Do you want them? I mean... We don't seem to be getting anything right for you at the moment. Thank you. I'd just like to be consulted, that's all, Sarah. I thought you of all people would understand that. Or don't you value your independence like you used to? Of course, I do. More so as I get older. It seems it's easier for people to overlook you. You're just there, a sort of inconvenience. Something for moving about or fixing, but not anyone you have to talk to any longer. Especially about where they're going to live. I'm sorry. 
I'll talk to Jack and Joe. We'll make amends. Promises are no good to me anymore, Sarah. I'm making tea if you want some. I'm sorry, there's, there's too much to do. Aye. Hi, Mark. Hiya. What are you two up to? Not much. Lynn's offered us some waitressing work. Well, she's just about to. Oh, that's a shame. Why? I'm just on my way home for some tea. I was thinking of inviting you. Both. Yeah, great. Debbie? Well, you'd rather eat food than serve it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but go on, say yes. You'd have to come if you don't want to. It's better than grafting for Lynn for a tent. Yeah, but she's waiting for us to turn up. Yeah, well, there's going to be other opportunities. <sighs> All right. Are you sure this car can handle the two passengers? Yeah, of course it can. Someone I've heard. Go on, Mark, show us what it can do. <laughs> Well, left nothing to chance, have you, Frank? There's something troubling you, isn't there? No. You've got that look about you that people always have when they're about to offer you good advice. If you've got that far, I didn't bother. You can struggle the rest of the way on your own. Something like, are you sure you know what you're doing? No. A bit more like, are you sure you know what you're wearing? But even more like, are you sure she's going to be here? Why shouldn't she be? I asked her, she said yes. All right, then. No problem, then. You do know where we're going tonight, don't you? To the wine bar, where as Lynn put it to be yesterday, it'll be business as usual. Alan Turner and Caroline said they would cover it for her. At least that's what Lynn told me on the phone this afternoon when I rang to confirm. <laughs> don't tell me you disapprove. No, I don't disapprove. It's your business. Right, in fact, then. Yep, should we walk down? I've done nothing all day. Exercising the idle rich that I should be brought to this. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine! Lorraine! Just forget her. I can't honestly say that I've ever found it difficult to make money. Luck's got a lot to do with it. Right time, right place. And a great deal of hard work. It's an egg. No, actually, it's more than that. You have to want to be rich to believe that you can persuade other people that you will be. It's a sort of illusion, really. A con. <laughs> you sound very cynical. Sometimes I feel I'm a kind of criminal. You do things that ordinary people only dream about. You have to want it. You have to be ready to take it. To, to tread on the little guy. Surprise you? No, you've just made me think. Money must excite you. Most people just want to get by. Maybe there's something wrong with me. <laughs> At the moment, there's quite a lot wrong with me. Anyway, what about you? What about your future? Not long ago, you were talking about a shop connected to the holiday village. I'm not sure if that's the way I want to go. I'm not sure if I want to stay in this business. Maybe you should make me a definite proposition. I mean, we might as well expect to be consulted on whether she marries Leonard or not. But this is about where she lives. What, well, isn't that? Steady, Jack. What? To wake Robert. Well, it has to be done. What are we going to do about Annie? <sighs> Consult her, of course. <laughs> Better stop what I'm doing. I didn't tell her about it. I mean, did she consult us when she wanted to take her money out of the farm? No, she didn't. She just decided, then demanded. No discussion. She's a fine one to talk about consultation. But she didn't take her money in the end. Tea? She came damn close. And she threatens me with marriage. Threatens me? You think I'm twisted. I must be the only man in the world in his 40s begging his mother to come and live with him. I mean, I got it all wrong with Leonard, didn't I? If only she'd said yes to him, she'd be off my back. I could be a grown-up for a change. She's your mum, and you love her. I'm just trying to get all the pieces back together again. Maybe I should just let it go. No, no, it's not resentment. It's more a kind of admiration. Of youth. 
of your generation. Mine is so straight-laced. Every encounter with the opposite sex is like picking your way through barbed wire. Oh, it's still like that for us. Maybe even more so. Young people are more conservative these days. A woman of your generation only has to say what she wants, and half the time she gets it. No messing. It's not like that. It'll never be like that. It's a pity we can't just reach out for a little, uh, little contact. Without being worried that it's going to be taken the wrong way. Sorry. I'm not bored, just uh, tired. It's been a long day. Thinking about the drive back, a cold, getting home to an empty bed. Yes. You don't have to if you don't want to. I don't think my babysitter would be very happy if I didn't go home tonight. Ring her. Tell her she can stay the night. If money's a problem, It I'll... isn't. You know what I'm saying, don't you? I'm flattered, but I'm going home. Sure. Well, you'll have to sneak in the back door, won't you? Or ring the doorbell and disturb them. I can't do that. Caroline? Yes, Archie? Are you uh, expecting Lynn back here tonight? I think so. Although she said not to worry if she didn't make it. You better ring doorbell then, haven't you? This is my father we're talking about. Well, why do they have to turn into people? What about us then? Where do we stand at the moment? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You asked me to make a commitment, then you cut me dead. Then you come back again, it's like nothing happened, didn't it? Well, nothing did happen, did it? So let's just carry on, why not? Look. I'm having a bit of a hard time at home at the minute. Maybe I asked too much of you. I'm sorry if I did. I want us to be friends. I mean it. Friends, right. At least I know where I stand with you. Well, it's the most important thing, isn't it? For now, things can always change. I'm very fond of you, you know that. Oh, you're very fond, thanks a lot. I'm sorry, I was teasing. Well, that makes it all right then, doesn't it? <laughs> 